Now the train beat is one of those things where some people kind of understand it and they, it's a little bit misunderstood and there's really more than one way you can do it. So I'm going to show you a couple of the ways that you can approach the train beat. Now the typical train beat that everybody is used to seeing is this uh, alternating hand where you're just playing right, left, right, left. You're actually playing the back beat on your right hand. So you sure. got the bass drum. Works great slow, works great fast. But it has sort of a shotgun approach, so there's some different ways. Like you could play a double stroke, playing right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, with the first one being the backbeat. That gives it a whole different lilt. It's a whole And then you can yeah. play that faster. And it's, it's got a really nice relaxed feel. You could even play a paradiddle. That's all it is. It's just the accents are opposite the bass drum, so it sounds like more than it really is. And like I said, that works really great fast too. But one of the things that I do for a slow train beat is I'm playing uh, what you'd normally play on a, on a regular rock groove on your hi-hat. Taking the right hand, moving it to the snare drum. But I'm playing the back beat as a flam. So it really thickens it up. And you've got this. Works great really slow, too. A lot of people have probably heard of like the double shuffle where they where you're playing right hand and left hand, you're playing the exact same rhythmical pattern. Uh, well, I do that with a train beat, which is cool because it gets you off of the snare drum and gets you onto a different timbre, which is really usually a challenge with a, with a, uh, with a train beat because you're kind of just stuck on the snare drum. So I go from... Carrying that halftime accent onto the, the bell.